Hello again, basketball fans. Welcome to a special edition of the Hoop District podcast. The Wizards are in the midst of a four-game West Coast road trip, and our lead reporter, Neil Dalal, had the chance to catch up with former Washington Wizards forward, fan favorite, and lady killer, Kelly Oubre Jr. Kelly and Neil discussed Oubre's time here in D.C., life in Phoenix, the trade that landed him there, and his feelings on everything from John Wall and Bradley Beal to Ernie, Tommy, and what he misses most about Washington, D.C. Enough from me. We're going to take a quick break to pay some bills. And on the flip side, our Hoop District exclusive interview with Kelly Oubre Jr. First off, how do you feel about Phoenix? Feeling good, man. Really good, actually. Um, you know, they've accepted me with open arms on the whole city, the, the organization. Um, you know, and it's just kind of a great change for me, um, you know, being where I was at uh, last December, um, you know, on D- in D.C., you know, just it was about my third, three and a half year mark, you know, to where it's, you know, I was ready for a new change, just ready for, you know, more responsibility and just the way, you know, the universe works. It gave me that, you know, in full strength. So I'm happy to be here. What do you think about, like, the city, just, like, non-basketball yeah. stuff? I mean, it's amazing. The weather, you know, it's winter time. We can still yeah. wear long sleeves and right. shorts. Uh, so it, it, it's a great mental, you know, it's a great mental stable place uh, for me. And, you know, I just kind of wake up every morning and I see the sun and, you know, I'm just kind of happy. So, yeah. yeah, it's a great place. Where are you living? I live in, um, you know, out in Paradise gotcha. Valley, Scottsdale area. So, cool. yeah, it's just, you know, all around great, great community of people. You know, they all keep the city clean, you know, yeah. things like that, little, little things they care about. Have you gone and seen, like, any, like, the mountains, gone hiking or anything like that? Um, I live by Camelback, so, okay. um, you know, I go up there, uh, but I haven't really gone hiking. I'm kind of scared of the nature. Really? Okay. I got to get these scorpions out of my head, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? But other than that, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I've just gone to Camelback Mountain, but I, I, I tend to venture. I'll say, I'll recommend this. I just did this. If you go to Sedona, mm-hmm. just the drive is so nice. Oh, word. You yeah. don't even have to do anything. Right, You're right. just driving there. It's so Coming pretty. back from Flagstaff, man, you can yep. see a lot of nature, a For lot sure. of green grass that you don't see in the desert. So, yep. yeah. All right. So, do you have a favorite restaurant in Phoenix? Mm. And what dish do you get there? My favorite restaurant has to be... Um, slanted rice okay. and it had this thing called the shaken beef it's like just like garlic and just like sauteed beef with rice sure. and with butter noodles it's actually the best thing I've had out here so, so yeah cool so I guess last year you know towards the tail end mm-hmm. you go on that really long streak of double digit scoring mm-hmm. end of the season you're starting mm-hmm. from where you were coming from how much did that mean to you it meant everything. Um, it just felt like a, you know, revitalization of my career, um, you know, of my love for the game. Just kind of putting in work, you know, ever since I got to D.C. and just trying to do everything I possibly can to help the team win was my goal for sure. Um, I felt as if, you know, a lot of times that I could have done more. Um, I could have been in position to do more. But, you know, I always wait my turn. I never, I never force anything or I never try to, you know, just verbally complain about what I need or what I want. But, you know, it was just a test of what I've been working on and what I can do in this league. And, um, you know, now I feel like in the, I'm in the rhythm to where it's, I can do this for the rest of my career, you know, Godspeed. So. so obviously, you know, the organization with the Suns last year, mm-hmm. they were going through some stuff, mm-hmm. but you had such a good stretch with them at the end of the season last year. Did you kind of almost know that you would be back here this season? No, I didn't actually, okay. man. But the way a business of basketball works, uh, which, you know, I was blessed to be introduced to it in last December. Um, you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't even, you know, thinking of that, you know, I was more so definitely, I, I love this place, and I, I know for sure that I, I wanted to be here, but at the end of the day, it's a business, man, and, you know, when money talks, uh, agents talk to owners, it, it kind of gets into a tricky game and a tricky situation, but, you know, everything worked out, James, you know, made a call, and I was here, so, you know, I'm still here for two two more years. During the summer, what are some of the things you worked on, either with Drew or by yourself? Well, me and Drew, we worked on just like the my mechanics uh, on my jump shot. Um, and the biggest thing for me is becoming a more consistent shooter. So still working on that. That's a gradual process. And also just kind of having the ball more in my hand, um, creating off the dribble. Uh, that's one thing that we worked on and just shooting off the dribble, off the bounce. So, you know, just kind of just trying to – he, he said it was more of the, the Bradley Bill package. You know, and I respected it, man, because I respect Brad's game so much. And, I, you know, I watch Brad every day, every time he plays because, you know, he's just such a great person off the court that, you know, I root for him no matter what. But, yeah, yeah I did the Bradley Bill package this summer, no lie. Nice. Yeah. So, obviously, you guys have had a really good start to the season. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think people were sleeping on you guys 
before oh, the season? Oh, sure. I mean, rightfully so, though. We haven't we haven't done anything for people not to sleep on us uh, about. We still haven't, um, and that's kind of our mindset here is that we have to continue to work and, you know, prove people wrong who don't really think that we are going to be here for the long run um, because our goal is something bigger than what people really are expecting out of us. They just want us to win games, a couple games here and there. They want us to have a better year than last year, but no, we have bigger goals for ourselves. So, yeah, I think a lot of people are still sleeping on us. What do you think like the addition of Monty Williams has done for this team, for the young players on this team? It's everything, man. Um, you know, Monty is a guy that is well-respected around the league. Um, you know, he he's very he's very vetted to where he knows exactly how to handle certain situations and you know he's a perfect coach for a team like us because you have me book da we're all you know under 23 under 24 excuse me um and these are these are guys who we're, we're ragers, man, at the end of the day. Like, we love to play hard with a lot of passion. But Monty is an even-killed source of energy for us to kind of rely on, man. And he's even cuckoo himself. But, you know, he's cuckoo in the best way possible. So. All right, so now I want to go back a little bit. Yeah. So December 14th, mm-hmm. Friday, you guys had just lost in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. You guys are in the locker room. Tough loss. Mm-hmm. When was the first time that you heard something? You know, it was crazy. It was in the showers, bro. Uh, I remember, you know, I was the last person to shower. Um, don't think I played particularly well that game towards I was happy. So I went into the shower, man, and, and Fav was in the shower. Brad was already in the shower, and Keith was in the shower. But they, they kind of were giving me this look. You know what I'm saying? They were giving me, like, this look. And, I, you know, it was some like when your dog dies and your, your dad don't want to tell you or something. And I, I peeped. I already felt the energy. Like, my heart kind of dropped because I knew what day it was and I knew what the timeline was. So, you know, they just told me. It's like, bro, you just been traded to Memphis. And I was like, I had to just kind of sit in the shower and just like think about what they were saying, man. And you know, it was kind of it was a, it was like a, it's a long, slow process though. That whole end of the game to the getting on the bus to the next morning, um, I was you know I was just definitely just in my head, just thinking about why, you know, thinking about why. What did I do, um, you know? And I, hey, that, 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 that's what it was. I was introduced to the business of it though through through my. I'm glad my brothers told me, man, because it it, it you know it, it helped me fall a little easier. But then, was there any, like, sudden changes when, like, oh, the cha- the trade's not going through? It was, man. You know, the crazy, the emotions that I had was, it was like, okay, so what's now? Because I know, Ernie, I know you're trying to trade me. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't feel right. I was asking my agent, like, yo, should I even go to practice? Should I go to work? And it was, like, another two days, two, three days till the trade was finalized and stuff like that. So, I was kind of just in the crib, just chilling and, you know, I was trying to figure out what was the next step, but, you know, my agent told me that Phoenix, James Jones called, and, you know, he had an opportunity for me to come play here, so it was a blessing. You're obviously really close to a lot of those guys on that team, mm-hmm. John, Brad, all of them. Mm-hmm. Was, do you think that, like, the team, I believe you were there when Jason Smith had gotten traded already. Yep, yep. Do you feel like the team's kind of just like, what the heck? Like, were you losing, like, one of the guys that, like, we love? Right. Um, it, was, it was a moment like that, um, but I, I, didn't, I didn't want to – even put any of that energy into the world, man, because they still the life goes on, the game goes on. They still have to go and compete the next day, whether I was on the team, whether Otto was on the team, whoever whoever's on the team, we still have to go out there and, and, and play. So it was just move on, man. We'll see each other down the line. Um, pray maybe one day we'll play, you know, together again or another, something like that. But I think that it was just kind of keep it moving, man. Uh, I don't even think about that anymore because it was in the past. Fair enough. One thing they did say, they credited you a lot. They said all the turmoil that was going on you were pretty you're very professional about it you're very composed Mm -hmm. for such a young player still in this league Mm -hmm. how does how do you do that i mean i think uh just honestly just forgiving uh forgiving and for and not forgetting but forgiving and just kind of just keeping it moving and getting better and worrying about myself uh you know my time in dc was up after that last game in brooklyn and you know i'll I shed some tears, you know, I said bye to my people there, and then after that, man, it's kind of just new new roads to Phoenix, so, yeah. Okay, so this next bit, I would just kind of get your, like, one sentence, like, reaction to mm-hmm. some of these things. Some of them are tough, some of them are hopefully a little bit more fun. Mm-hmm. So, February last year, John fully ruptured his Achilles. Mm-hmm. Always kind of unfortunate, man. Unfortunate because I just know, I know how hard he works, and I know that you know last year he was definitely trying to do everything in his possible, in it, in it, that he possibly could to be an All Star, you know, to be an MVP caliber player. And you know the way the universe works, man, it throws a little wrench at you. But I just know that John is gonna come back way better than ever, man. So I, I got faith in that. So obviously, you know the numbers game. 
they traded you, they mm -hmm. still had Otto. Mm -hmm. but then they traded Otto. It made no sense. So did you kind of think it was like, man, I could have just stayed there? Or? Hey, man, I don't know. Uh, so this is about my pay grade, I shall say. Um, but um, uh, Otto is in, in, in Chicago now doing his thing. I'm in Phoenix. So uh, they, they, they made the decisions that they felt was best for the organization, I shall say. Sure. Um, so obviously, after 16, 17 years, Ernie got relieved. Mm -hmm. um, Tommy got the job after some kind of back and forth with things. Mm -hmm. What's your relationship like with him, and what was your reaction when Tommy he got the job? is Tommy has actually been the coolest um, individual um, who I've communicated with in that organization. Uh, he he texts me very frequently whether I was sick, down, you're indifferent. He always texts me saying he was with me. Um, he always gave me encour encouraging affirmations, things like that to always think about, man. And I, he gave me an opportunity to play in D.C. Um, I know Tommy is a smart, basketball-minded individual, and he's an even better person. So I'm just super happy and excited that he got the job. Why do you think he can be so relatable to people your guys' age when, you know, he's a dad and everything yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. I think it's because he's been around a lot of people you know, basketball players. He's been around a very long time. Um, but he also, you know, it, it got to kind of credited to how he was raised, and, and in a sense, man. He was raised, you know, pretty much just to be a selfless person, to be, you know, a kind, loving person, man. And he, he shows that, and I feel as if, you know, he, he's a great for the job. Um, so, obviously, Brad, you know, had two more years left on his deal, mm -hmm. made the decision to, I'm going to do a one-on-one and, -one and extend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my time in D.C. when people thought, oh, like, he should get out, things like that. Yeah. What did you think about that, and what do you think that says about him as a man? I mean, I says that he's lo it says that he's loyal. Um, he's loyal, but he's also, he's understanding, you know, at this place in his career, man, it's a profession. He, he, his legacy is on the line now at this point. And, uh, you know, for, for Brad, it's not even about the money. It's never been about the money for him, man. And for me, working out with him in the summertime, being with him while he's signing his deals and being doing his deals, man, he's always just one of the best fit to where he can succeed. Um, so for his next step, man, he's the one and one is going to be he's doing what he's doing now, just like he does every year. And next year, you know, they, they got to put some pieces around him or they have to continue to just grow in a, in a place where he's comfortable with staying in D.C. So I feel like he, they deserve him and John. They deserve to, you know, compete for a championship one day. Yeah. So obviously... One of my favorite things about you when you were in D.C. was line up, running out the tunnel, mm -hmm. still the on dab, that. hit the dab. Yes, sir. Now Thomas Bryant does that. Oh, brother. In, I would say in respect to you, That's love. OG. That's my bro. Yeah. Did you know that? And what did you He always, that? man, he has so much energy. So, like, he always would match my energy out in the tunnel. So, I just, I knew, I didn't, he always would be doing something behind me while I'm doing my thing. But, man, it's love that he's, you know, he's still doing the dab. Uh, you know, Thomas Bryan is actually one of the people I'm most proud of in this NBA is because he worked his butt off from the mud to kind of get where he's at. And he ain't going nowhere. He's a hard-working pro, so. What do you miss most about D.C.? Man, I honestly miss uh, that mumbo sauce, bro. Yeah, yeah, I missed I missed the wings with the mumbo sauce and you know all that good stuff. But it was just a great place, you know, because it felt felt super warm. Um, it, it was a place to where as I accepted as home, and uh, you know I was when I left DC, I was definitely you know sad, devastated, moving out of my apartment and stuff like that. But you know, there's always grass is greener on the other side as well. You know, if you continue to stay positive. So, but DC as a whole, man, the people uh, living in on the campus of GW for in Georgetown and all that just seeing people walk around you know you don't really see that much urban city life out here but you know it, it, to each his own um, you said to each his own? to each his own oh, to to, yeah own. so you like what you like gotcha. you know everything like that because Brad has been saying a lot teach his own because he knows he has to teach up all the young guys now. oh no I don't so know I that's what he said oh that'd do you guys be, know that'd like be that? cool no no, no. Um, last thing what's your favorite Jackie Miles story oh brother Jackie you ever seen like the memes? Or oh, okay, so there's these videos of like the super small dudes. I think he has like a, a, a like a problem. You know what I'm saying? He has you know like a little sickness. He's super small, but he always punches everybody. Okay. You ever seen like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Jackie, man. Jackie used to be a boxer, but I just see I don't see it. But he has a lot of technique. Right. So him and Keith, you know, he used to always play around and just like air box and sure. do all that stuff. And then Jackie, you know, he'd get his wins, he would take his losses too. But I just seeing him punch the air, man, and just be a professional boxer is the funniest thing to me, man. But just also his charisma, his swag, you know, his, the way he uses his words. I miss Jackie. Oh, yeah. Cool, guy. Appreciate man. your time. I'm ready. I'll see you tomorrow. Yep, man. will do.